Good evening, everybody. JDev has returned once again to give you exactly what you want. Of course, that'd be more of me, minus the beard this evening. That amazing, beautiful backdrop that's behind me, giving you my thoughts, my opinions, and hopefully in this particular video, some expert analysis on a certain topic subject. I'm, of course, here to do my weekly Game of Thrones recap since it's Game of Thrones season. Before I get into details about this episode, and I'm going to go into details about this episode, if you're not caught up with where Game of Thrones currently is, I highly, highly, highly suggest that you don't watch this video because there will be major spoilers ahead. So, you've been warned. So, Game of Thrones, Season 8, Episode number 4, Episode title to be edited in later as they haven't released the name of the episode, at least from when I last checked. Coming off of last week's crazy epic episode, this was pretty epic itself. Uh, I, yeah, I'm kind of at a loss for words, even though I kind of saw things coming, but not like this. So let's talk about the episode, what I liked, what I didn't like, and my overall score of the episode. I liked the touching moment at the beginning of the episode with some of our departed characters from last week, their bodies and the people that were standing over them, such as Jorah with Daenerys over the top of him, Theon with uh, Sansa over the top of him, Ed with Samuel, and uh, Beric Dondarrion with Arya over the top of him. They all burned their bodies. It was a pretty touching moment, a good send-off for some of our dearly departed characters from last week. Another very important detail of the episode, which i surprised kind of happened already, I thought this might happen at the last episode, was Daenerys recognizes Gendry as Lord Gendry Baratheon of Storm's End. That was pretty cool. Of course, Gendry's really happy about that, so he finds Arya, who's shooting with her bow and arrow because she doesn't like crowds, and uh, proposes to Arya and wants her to be the lady of uh, Storm's End, which Arya says that one day Gendry will find a lady, as she's not a lady, and rejects his proposal. That's sad. We have all our major characters, except for Arya, that are at Winterfell, or what's left of Winterfell. Drinking, toasting, having fun. There's a scene with uh, Brienne, Podrick, Tyrion, Jamie all drinking. We find out that Brienne is a virgin. Which I kind of, we kind of figured out anyway. Tormin comes over. Brienne, of course, wants to get away, and she does. She says she has to go to the bathroom to get away from Tyrion, or not Tyrion. I'm sorry, Tormund. And Tormund's about to follow her, and then Jamie stands up and follows Brienne. And of course, a couple scenes later, Jamie and Brienne, get it on. So all the all of you out there, including myself, that were hoping for some sort of romantic encounter with Tormund and uh, Brienne, that's highly unlikely to happen at this point, is uh, Brienne and Jamie are a thing. Well, we shall see. So that was uh, very interesting, something we've been waiting for since Season 2, but do we really think that would actually happen with all of Tormund's advances towards uh, Brienne? But they get it on. Pretty good stuff there. There's a scene where John tells Bran to tell Sansa and Arya who he really is. You know, his lineage of being a Stark and a Targaryen. So now Sansa knows. That's another thing to, that Sansa can hold over Daenerys. Uh, we have a scene where John says goodbye to Tormund, Sam, Gilly, and essentially Ghost, as John is obviously making his way to King's Landing eventually. And Tormund is going back up to Castle Black. Or that's what we're led to believe, at least. So I don't know if it's the last time that those characters will see each other, but I hope not. Why would John abandon Ghost? Does he like... Well, I guess he has another pet he likes more than Ghost. It's a dire wolf. He can't abandon Ghost like that, but he wants... Torment to take ghosts with him because he'll like the cold of the north better there or whatever. So that was uh, touching stuff. Well, we also find out that Gilly, if you didn't know already, the actress is actually pregnant in real life, is pregnant on the show, obviously, and is having another baby. This one with Sam. And uh, yeah, apparently there wasn't a lot to do at the Citadel 
All they would do is get it on. So congratulations to Sam and Gilly for child number two. And I really hope Gilly dies just because I don't like Gilly. I'm sorry. I just don't. There was a lot of things in this episode that, like, I was running out of room to write. Um, so we have some of our characters depart. But before that happens, we get Braun showing up at Winterfell in a scene with Tyrion and Jamie. He tells Tyrion and Jamie about the offer that Kyburn made Braun to kill Jamie and Tyrion, which I think actually is Kyburn doing that deal and not Cersei. Just a hunch. Cersei already kind of killed Jamie when he was last at uh, King's Landing. But Tyrion says he would double it and give uh, Braun an even bigger castle. And it seems like that's going to happen. Of course, before that, he agrees to it. He just punch Tyrion and potentially break his nose, but. Braun says, nope, I've broken noses before, and that's not the sound it makes. So that was good stuff to see a, a little bit of comedy for Braun. Uh, we have a scene where Arya meets up with the Hound, and they're apparently going to go to King's Landing together. I don't know, some of these characters, I think we're going to have some major deaths coming up in the next couple episodes. Just a hunch. By some of the events that have happened, that's what it's leading me to, leading me to believe. So we have Daenerys takes a bunch of Unsullied soldiers, Varys and Tyrion, who were actually talking about how they, well, Varys isn't a fan of Daenerys now, it sounds like. Tyrion still is. I'm not sure where that's leading. They're talking about maybe another is out there. Sansa was talking about another besides Jon Snow, if, if memory serves me correctly. But nonetheless, let's move on. So we have Varys, Grey Worm, a bunch of Unsullied soldiers, Tyrion, Missandei, all on a ship going to King's Landing. Daenerys is up top with uh, on Drogon, and then we have Rhaegal. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, an arrow goes through Rhaegal. And then another one, and another one. And we find out it's Euron on uh, one of his ships, and Rhaegal goes down, and the dragon is dead. At least, that's what it seems like. Didn't see that one coming. A lot of our characters swim to shore. Grey Worm's freaking out because Missandei's nowhere near. We find out later on that Missandei is actually at Winterfell. Or, I'm sorry, not Winterfell. Winterfell, King's Landing, being held hostage by Cersei the Mountain and uh, Euron. There's another scene that we go back to uh, Winterfell where, because of the events that happened... Everybody's out to get Cersei now because of the dragon dying. And Jamie gets word of that and then makes his way back to King's Landing. Of course, before he leaves, Brienne tries to stop him and he tells Brienne how much of a bad guy he is, what the, the things that he's done in the past, and takes off. So I don't know if that's the end of that relationship or if that's the last time that they'll see each other. I think it is. I don't think Jamie's going to make it back. I, I don't know. I hope he does, but I think he's going to die. Because I don't see Tyrion dying. I think either Jamie or Tyrion will die. So then we get the big standoff at the end of the episode. We've got uh, Daenerys with uh, Varys, Tyrion, Grey Worm, and a bunch of Unsullied soldiers. And then we have on top of King's Landing, the Mountain, Cersei, uh, uh, Euron, a bunch of Lannister people, Missandei standing there as well. Kyburn comes out. Tyrion meets Kyburn kind of in the middle. They talk. They try to agree on terms. Tyrion tells Kyburn that they want Cersei to surrender. And then Kyburn tells Tyrion they want Daenerys to surrender. That doesn't go too well. Then there's a scene. This is hard, folks. There's a scene where uh, Cersei tells Missandei, if you have any last words, say them. And Miss Sandy says, uh, Chikaris. And uh, the mountain gets the signal, and the mountain cuts off Miss Sandy's head. I thought Miss Sandy was a safe character for the whole series. I just didn't see a, a part where she could die, but they did it to us again. They fooled us. It's an unexpected death, so it was definitely shocking. But yeah, so that uh, it's on now. There's not going to be any surrender going on now. It's going to be fight to the death. Yeah, I don't know what to expect in the next couple episodes, but oh, is it going to be crazy? But this was a really good episode with a lot of little things in it. 
I'm going to score the episode. I don't like the fact that Miss Sandy died. Or Miss Sandy, sorry. I said Miss Sandy. I'm going to give it a 9.4. Really good. Just a couple minor things I didn't like. But all in all, an awesome episode to set us up for a big showdown, which I think will just be next week. I think next week's a big showdown, the big battle. And then the episode afterwards is more of a what's left, who's going to be king, let's sort out everything. I don't know, but I think next week's going to resolve the whole Cersei thing. Just a hunch. So, what an episode. Oh, sorry, the review took a little bit longer. A recap took a little bit longer. I had some cable box issues this evening. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the review again. 9.4 out of 10. And, of course, if you like this video, make sure you like it. Make sure you thumb it up. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you comment. Because we need to get the discussion going. And you all know that I'll be back again soon with another. Peace.